Okay, that's the beginning right there. Okay. Solving systems of inequalities by graphing. You're going to need your graph paper. Graph paper, graph paper to make this work. All right, here we go. Pretty much the whole thing is graph paper. Hardly any notes to put in there. Example one, solve the system. And since our system in inequalities involves shading, we're going to have lots and lots and lots of answers. So we don't write them all out. We just show them on the graph with our shading. All right, let's start right here. 2x minus 3. So we know how to graph inequalities. My y-intercept is negative 3. My slope is 2. So I rise 2, run 1. Rise 2, run 1. Is it a dotted line or a solid line? I see a solid line here, so there will be a solid line right here. That means my boundary is included as part of the answer. Okay, I'm going to go a different color here. For this one, I have y is less than negative x plus 2. My y-intercept is 2, and my slope is negative 1. So y-intercept is 2, slope is negative 1. That means I rise negative 1, run 1. Remember how this works? You write it as a fraction. If you don't have a fraction already, then you can write it over 1. Rise negative 1, run 1. Okay, make enough to make a decent line. This line, however, does not have a solid line underneath it, so it will be a dotted line. Oops, you know what I should have done? Can I stop with the green? I'll put it up in just a second, but I want to go back to my pink color here. Um, I didn't shade. Okay, let me shade in pink so we're not confused. Oh my goodness, which one is that? All right, I have to test 0, 0 to see which side is shade. 0 is greater than or equal to 2 times 0 minus 3. So 0 is greater than or equal to negative 3. Um, is that true or false? That's true. So on the pink line, this is why I don't go on. I want you to shade before you go on and graph the other one. This point is true for the pink, so I will shade everything in that pink. Oh, look at that. How nice is that? Okay, that's good enough. Now I'm going to go back to the green, and I've got my line. Okay, now I still have to test in, we're ignoring the pink line really right now at this moment. I just want to look at what side to shade of the green. Oh, guess what I forgot to do? I forgot to make it dotted. You guys were like hoping that I was making that mistake and getting an extra credit. <laughs> oh, I caught it before you did. All right, now let me test zero, zero. Zero goes in for y, zero goes in for x. So now zero is less than two, which is true. So I'm gonna shade for the green side. Um, Everything, oh, of course, I'm trying to show with my arm. That's not going to work. I will now show, ignore the pink, and just put the green up here. Okay, notice how I'm shading all the way across that dotted line. Okay, I don't stop at an axis. I don't stop because there's a pink line in the way or anything. Now, my answer, my solution, is where I have overlapping uh, colors. So, basically, the idea is... This point is a solution, this point is a solution, meaning if I take this point, it will work in this equation and the other equation. If I check this point, at this point, this point, and I'm not gonna write out all these points, even points that are not on the corners of the grids. So how do I show that? I make that color the darkest color of all. So I'm gonna, or a different color. Usually I try to go with a darker color. So here, let me highlight. Can I highlight black? That's gonna be interesting. This is my solution. The boundary is this dotted line until I come down here to the pink solid line. And this is my solution set right there. That's how it goes. Let's try another one. Example two, solve the system. All right, we're gonna start with red for this one. 3x minus three. My y-intercept is negative three. My slope is three. So I rise three, run one. Rise three, run one. And I have a solid line up here, so I have a solid line running through my points. Okay, now I have to test 0, 0 to see which side to shade. So is 0 less than or equal to 0 minus 3? 0 is not less than or equal to negative 3, so this point for the red side is false. So I'm going to shade everything on the other side. All of these points are my true points. Okay, next line. I think we'll go 
And I wish I had some more color variety all of a sudden. Let's go with, let's go with purple. All right, here I go. X plus one. So my y-intercept is at one. My slope is actually one on this. I would have a one in front of the x, so I need that as a fraction. So I'd write that as one over one. So from this point, rise one, run one. Rise one. Oh, look at the intersect right there. That's kind of cool that I can see that happening. Solid line or a dotted line is the next question. It is no solid line there, so no solid line on my graph. Look at I'm actually saying a dotted line and making it at the same time. All right, testing zero, zero. I'm kind of ignoring the red, just trying to pay attention to the purple. If I put zero in here, is zero greater than one? Yes, it is. No, it's not. Let me change that to a false. Zero is not greater than one. So this purple is false on this side down. It's false, which makes this side true. Um, okay, so here's the purple side. Okay, where do I have overlapping colors? My overlap is this area right here. Isn't that crazy? That little corner right up there. Okay, that's example two. Let's go on to another example. Um, we're getting the hang of it, aren't we? Except now you got a y is greater than two. I gotta remind you guys how to do that. We should all know, but the quick reminder will not hurt us. Let's start with orange. We're kind of Halloween-y, aren't we? Are we close? Maybe we're a little past. One is your y-intercept on this one. The slope is negative one. So I have a slope of negative one, which I will write as negative one over one. So from this point, I will rise negative one, run one. Rise negative one, run one. Okay, why am I singing? I don't know. All right, less than or equal to, which means I have a solid line going through these particular points. Testing, testing, one, two, three, you know how they do that for microphones. Zero, is it less than or equal to zero plus one? Let's see, is zero less than or equal to one? Yes, that is true. So this point is true. So I'm gonna shade everything on that side of the line. Okay, new color. Um, let's go with this funky blue. Okay, y is greater than two. Oh, what is it to be y equals two? What does that look like? Well, you have a y-intercept of two, and you actually have a slope of zero. You can say plus zero x. Slope of zero means you have a line like this. Okay, this is also supposed to be a dotted line. So I make a dotted line for those points. And hopefully you won't have to test a point, but if you do, is it true or false that zero is greater than two? That's false. So this side is false. That means everything up here is true. So let me shade that up here above this line. And our solution set is where we have overlapping colors. So if I do that, it would be this little area right over in here. Okay, I'm not going to list out all those points. I show it in a picture. There's a bajillion. What do we call that in mathematics? Infinite number of points. That would be a solution to that. Example number four. I had to give you one with some fraction ones already given in there. All right, let's go with my green. All right, we're going to do this one in green. Uh, Y-intercept is one. La, 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 la. Slope is negative three-fourths. Rise, negative three, run four, put a dot. Rise, negative three, run four. I don't know where that's at. Somewhere over there. Let's go the other way. Okay, now I should be able to make a line. It will be a solid line because I have a solid line in my inequality. Because it's, because it's greater than or equal to. Okay, testing point. Zero, zero. Is zero greater than or equal to zero plus one? In other words, is zero greater than or equal to one? That's false. This point is false. So I will be shading the other side. All right, now I'm going to a new point. New point, new point. Let's go blue now. This one is gonna be in blue. All right, I've got a y-intercept of negative two, and I have a slope of negative three-fourths. So I rise negative three, run four. Rise three, run negative four. I have a solid line again. Oops, not the straightest line in the world, but that'll work. 
Test zero, zero. Zero less than or equal to zero minus two. Is zero less than or equal to negative two? Well, that's false. So this point for the blue side is false. So I have to shade everything over here. So I come up here and I shade. I want it to be shading blue. There, I think I got it. Oh my gosh. Where's the overlap? There is no overlap. There is no solution to the system. Okay, so I would just say empty set there. There is no solution to the system. Um, basically, there is no number in the entire world, in the entire universe, that you can put in for x that will come out for y that will be exactly the same in this inequality. Okay, moving on. Example 5. The speed limits while driving on the highway are different for trucks and cars. Cars must drive between 45 and 65 miles per hour, inclusive. So we're including the 45 and the 65 in the speed limit. In other words, 45 is okay, 44 is not. 44.99999 is not okay. Trucks are required to drive between 40 and 55 miles per hour, inclusive. Let C represent the range of speeds for cars and T represent the range of speeds for trucks. So let's call C this way, let's call T, this probably isn't the best kind of graph, but you probably have the same kind of graph I do right now with your notes. So uh, cars must be between these two numbers, 45 and 65, and they say inclusive, that's why I have less than or equal to. I tried again with 40 and 55 miles an hour, but this time we're talking about, oh I meant to put C on my previous, oops. I want to, can I change this? Thanks, thanks you guys, let me change that to a C. Now we're talking about trucks, so I'm going to put a T, because that was all smart, smart. 40 to 55. All right, let's do, okay, let's do, um, 20, 40, 60, 80, and I think we'll do the same the other way. 20, 40, 60, 80. Okay, what this means is that my car interval can be between 45 and 65. So here's 45, and it can be included in this. Okay, I guess I don't really need the negative axis there, or the negative quadrant. And then 65 would be, I guess that's not really 45 where I placed it. 65 is probably right in here. Okay, and I'm seeing all the numbers in between. So when I shade this, I am meaning all of these in between. Okay, that little strip right there. All right, let's go with the other one. Um, so now we're between trucks, we're 40 and 55. So 55 is probably right up in here. And I'm saying all the numbers in between those two count. They're a part of my solution. So I can shade that in green, and it looks like this. Okay, so where is, what's the question? I don't think I even hardly have a question. Let's see represent the range, and T represent the range of speeds. All right, so here is the solution. This is where cars and trucks, let me actually do that in pen. This little piece right here is your solution to your system. Okay, cars and trucks should be in this speed limit, <laughs> anywhere in there. So if you had things that meet, meet that qualification, it would be like 49 and 51 would be in that little square. All right, moving on. Example six. All right, we definitely need to go through one of these because we have all different kinds and we have multiple inequalities. So let me start with 2x. Let's not start with black, though. Um, let's start with orange. 2x minus y is greater than or equal to negative 1. Now you can do 0 blank, blank 0, or you can switch it into slope intercept form. I think I'm going to switch it into slope intercept form. Okay, so I subtract 2x from both sides. I've got to switch my signs by multiplying by negative 1. So you can switch. Here's the kicker. Whenever you multiply or divide by a negative number, you switch your inequality, 1 plus 2x. So all the signs are switched, even the inequality. So I've got 1 is my y-intercept, my slope is 2. So rise 2, run 1. Okay, this should be a solid line because I have a solid line right here. Test 0, 0. Is 0 less than or equal to 1? That's true. 
This point is true, so now I'm going to shade all the orange over here. Please don't wait to shade. I know I almost screwed up on the first one here, but please don't do that. Okay, let's look at the second one. X plus Y is less than or equal to 4. Just to change it up a little bit, I am going to do this 0 blank, blank 0. So if I put 0 in for X, oh, I don't want to do orange. Let's go on to red. Okay, I'm doing this in red now. 0 blank, blank 0. So if I put 0 in for X, Cover that up. My y value becomes 4. You're pretending it's like equal to. If I put 0 in for y, my x value becomes 4. So I'm going to graph those points. 0, 4, 4, 0. I will have a solid line for this as well. Oh, look at that straight line. Test 0, 0. 0 in for x, 0 in for y. Is 0 less than or equal to 4? Why, well, yes it is. That's a true statement. So this point is true. So now I am going to shade in red everything on this side of the line. Okay? So already I've kind of controlled my solution area is going to be in this location. But I still have more to graph. The fun never ends. It just keeps going and going like the Energizer Buddy. All right, so now I'm on this one. X plus 4Y is greater than or equal to 4. I think I'm going to stick with 0 blank blank 0. Okay, if I put 0 in for X, 4 times what gives me 4? 1. If I put 0 in for Y, that's gone. What X has got to be equal to 4? So now I'm going to graph 0, 1. And then 4, 0. Okay, and now I make a solid line again. There's my solid line. And I'm going to test 0, 0. 0 goes in for both, and I get greater than or equal to 4. 0 is greater than or equal to 4. That would be false. Okay, so this point is false, so then I have to shade everything in green up above this line. And up above, I mean away from 0, 0. All right, where do I have all three colors? <laughs> There's one little triangle in here. One triangle that has all three colors. It's this area right here. Okay, that is the solution to your system on example six. And that ends our lesson. Yippee-yay, Kaye.